CycleMD, welcome to another video. In this one, we'll be diving into three super easy checks that we can make on a charging system with your motorcycle. Some of my most popular, most viewed videos go right back into testing regulator rectifiers, your battery's dying, stator checks, is it grounded, all these different things. I just wanna use one tool, a multimeter, and show you guys how to check the system overall to help diagnose what's going on. Of course, there are other checks that we can make to pinpoint what went wrong with this part. But if you know at least these three checks that I'm gonna show you, diagnosing your charging system issue is gonna be a walk in the park. Charging system has come a long way in the motorcycle industry, but the fundamentals of testing those parts will not change. Yes, many models are different. They use a different system or electromagnetic or a three-phase, two-phase. There's like 10, 12 different styles of charging systems. But the one that we're gonna talk about today pretty much relates to any bike that was around in the 80s, 90s, 2000s. Some slight variations on what parts they used, how they integrated the regular rectifier versus separating them and those kind of things. But we're still checking the system out as a whole. But things do fail differently on different makes and models. Some things just don't perform as well as they do on that bike. So it is important that when you are diagnosing something like this that you have at least the standard values on what your bike should be doing. AC output of the stator. And the threshold of when your bike does start charging, when does it stop charging, what's the ceiling on it, what RPM. Those kind of things can be applied to so many bikes and are pretty general, but you never know. Luckily, with what I'm going to tell you, in most cases, it's really gonna help you out. So if you are new to the channel, welcome. We do videos on motorcycle repair and maintenance. If you want more helpful videos, things like what I'm gonna show you here, in the description below is a free course. 30 plus videos on things that you should be doing on a consistent basis. Check it out, it's in the description, yours to take. So here we have a 2002 Honda Magna. The systems that they use in the charging system, the regular rectifiers down here underneath the battery box, our stators right here, it's usually the same ones, many other bikes. This uses a three-phase charging stator. And because I don't want this video to be crazy long, I'm not gonna dive into why it's called a three-phase and why a two-phase is different and why electromagnetic system charges output is more and why the regular rectifier, it's none of that's helpful to you, really. We have three yellow wires that come out of the stator. Each one of these are putting out an AC voltage. That has to be transferred to a DC voltage so the battery can be charged. AC to DC here. It gets switched over to DC because of a bunch of cool black magic stuff that takes place inside of a regulator rectifier. That's that thinned, sorry my voice is cracking, I'm actually a little bit under the weather, but that's that thinned looking metal part that sticks out somewhere on your bike, or they hide it, but regardless, it's thinned for a reason because it gets hot. Sometimes they look like this, but ultimately it is designed to be cooled down, voltage gets sent into this, and it comes out different. Right? Battery, you, you can't have an AC charged battery. That's a completely different system. So that's the basics. That's, that's what you need to know. The regular rectifier does need to be grounded. You need to make sure that you do have two green wires or one green wire going to the regular rectifier that's grounded to the battery. We, we gotta have it. But I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I would do if someone pulled the bike onto my bench so the battery keeps dying, I've replaced 10 parts on it, none of it's worked, to try to pinpoint where the problem area is. First thing I'm going to do is fire the bike up and make sure that it is charging. Super easy check to do. Grab a multimeter. Okay, your multimeter is going to have a V like that in a straight line. And then they'll have a V with a squiggly line over top. All right, this is AC, alternating, DC, direct. Okay, straight line is direct. We want to go to, on this meter, we're going to go to 20. Okay, we're working with a 12 volt system. If you have an auto ranging or whatever, that's fine too. Okay, so DC voltage. We want to check it at the battery when the bike's nice and warmed up so you're not battling because obviously you have to have the bike running. So we're going to fire it up, go net, <clears throat> go positive to red, negative to negative, and see what we're charging at. First, I'm going to do it at idle. What is, what is the voltage I'm reading at idle? Then I'm going to rev the bike up, 3,000, 4,000 RPM, see where it's at. When I'm, then I'm going to go spike it a little bit more to make sure that we're not overcharging, if that's the case. Now, this bike has zero issues with the charging system. All of the specs that we're gonna see, from the stator to the AC output to the charging, it is all perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. Which is helpful, because if you have a bike that is not perfect, then the specs or the readings that I'm getting will be different from what you're getting. So, let's fire the bike up and see how she's doing. Positive, negative. We are at 14.7 volts. It's charging. Okay, I'm gonna rev it up, make sure that it does not charge over 16 to 17 volts. Nothing. 
It's not overcharging, it's not undercharging. It is with a healthy battery, because if you're trying to charge a battery that's at 10 volts, you're not gonna get good readings. And then you'll never know what's actually wrong. Healthy battery above 12.4 or at 12.4 volts, you know it's good. <clears throat> that way we're not straining the system at all. I revved it up, it's not going over a threshold of about 16 to 17 volts. 15.8, sometimes that's kind of high, but regardless, as long as it's not just steady climbing, 18, 19, 20, then the system is charging and it's fine. Boom, you're done. Okay, now with that first step done, that first check, we now know where to go if, we're, if there was a problem, okay? If it wasn't charging at all, then we would have to start somewhere, regular rectifier or stator. And there's two checks that we're gonna make here. Now, before I keep going, if you were overcharging, if you revved it up and it's going 17, 18, 19, 20, that's an issue. That's likely a regulator rectifier issue because that job, the purpose of that system is to keep that from happening. It's not the stator's job to do that. It's the regular rectifier's job to do that, okay? And if you buy an aftermarket one, then you are on your own. Now, moving forward, I would start at the stator because that's what's sending voltage to the regulator rectifier. Now, we had that plus or minus 14 volts at the battery. Your bike may be different. Gold wings don't start charging after the first like 10 seconds of them running. Certain bikes do certain things. Some may be charging at 13.2, 13.7. If you email me or anybody else and say, hey, mine's charging at 13.5, is that okay? You need to do a little bit more research than that, okay? Because it's, it's difficult to know model to model what it's supposed to do. If you're trying to get, if you're trying to work on your bike and not spend money, you have to do a little bit more work when it comes to understanding how your bike should be. That's just my short rant when it comes to questions that I get all the time about their bike. So let's say that we were not charging well, or let's say that it was very low or, or not charging at all. We're gonna go to the stator. Now we follow this wire here. We'll locate them in a bracket, because they kind of get buried right here, which is really nice, but we'll locate them right here. Now, when we unplug this, we have now isolated that stator. This is the stator. This is the harness side. Very important to know these two differences when you're ever you're testing anything on a motorcycle electric wise. Harness side, part side. This is the part that goes to the stator, okay? So this same style of connector, these three wires will lead us to the regulator rectifier. If you were to locate the regular rectifier, you'd see three wires with a plug that looks something similar to this. So there's actually two places that you can make these checks on. But a lot of times when it comes to diagnosing electrical stuff, in the manual that you will read through, hopefully, it will show you where you can isolate and then you can look further down the line. So if I wanted to, if we're gonna do an AC output check on this stator here, and we're gonna hit these two, three, three wires, let yellow to yellow, yellow to yellow, then yellow to yellow, all three checks, I can do the exact same check with this plugged back in and then unplugging the regulator rectifier. The bike will still run, it will not run very long because we're not charging a battery. We're just draining the battery continuously, but we don't care about that because we're just trying to isolate the system. If we wanted to check to make sure that there's no broken wires, because we could check here and AC output is great. There's no, it's not grounded to the frame, there's nothing. But we can go over here and then all of a sudden if we check at the regular rectifier and we're not getting the same readings that we got here, then that means there's a problem from here to the regular rectifier. It's like common, it's common sense if you really just kind of break it down into how the systems and systems in general work on motorcycles. So there's two places to check, but we're gonna isolate the stator just for this video, and we're, and we're gonna make two different checks on this, okay? First, we're gonna make sure that this stator and the windings that are involved in it are not grounded. They have not broken down, burnt up, and grounded themselves to the engine or the, or the, or the frame of the motor, because all of the metal things that you see should be grounded, meaning having a path back to the negative side of the battery. Now we're gonna take our meter and go to ohms or resistance. I'm sure you've seen that little omega sign that is down here. This one has those all these stupid settings. I really like auto ranging stuff, but we're looking at somewhere around here, the, the, that 200 ohm rating, all right? Okay, so now all I'm gonna do, take my meter, we're in the outer limit or the, uh, we are in ohm setting. Now I'm gonna take my meter, set it up here, on the stator side, stator side. We're gonna go ground one of these yellow wires. Make sure it does not have a connection to ground. Make sure you are making a good read on that terminal. Are we grounded? Is it grounding anywhere? It's not. Okay, this whole motor should be grounded, so. Next wire, there's three of them. Three different checks. It's really, I call it one check, but three different checks. None of this is grounded. This is a great operational stator. 
Now what we can do is check to make sure that the AC output of each leg, three legs, three yellow wires, they're all putting out around the same. You can still have a dying battery if your stator is not grounded, okay? And it's because of the AC output of the stator has dwindled. It's not doing as well. The numbers that you will see here are pretty common, okay? I'm not gonna give you a parameter. If it's between 30 and 90, then you're doing okay. No, this is what they should be looking like. When we rev, the, when we rev this bike up and we're putting an AC output on a bike like this, this is the type of numbers that we should be seeing. If you have a manual, if you have a book, it will tell you specifically it should be between these two ranges. Regardless, what we're looking for is for the readings to all be about the same. If we have one that when I rev it up to 5,000 RPM, it's putting out 60, 70 AC volts, but the other one's only doing 30, there's your problem. Don't go any further, there's your problem. All of them should be around the same, that's it. Nothing else to it, all right? so. I'm, I like to use these little mail terminals. I'll just put one in one side, one in the other. It's kind of hard to poke these things with the meter leads. And I'll just hook up some alligator clips, just easier when you're working by yourself. Okay, again, we have to be set in DC. This is the V with the squiggly line across. That's alternating current. Ideally, we do not want to touch the frame or a ground with it. We just want to try to be safe with what we're doing. We are pushing out some pretty high AC volts. Okay, that's set up. So we have three different checks that we're gonna do. There's one check, I would move this over and do the other one. There's two checks, I would move this over and do the other one, there's three checks, okay? We're checking that one to that one and that one to that one. It's three checks. At idle, we're at 17, five, 18, 30, 80. Swap this over. A little bit more, not a big deal. See how similar all those readings were? Our AC voltage out of the stator is brilliant, okay? And that's it guys, that's all we're gonna talk about. We did enough checks to know a lot of information about the bike. This one is charging. The AC voltage is good. If it was not charging at all, and we did those checks on the stator, then that would be telling us that it's likely either the regulator rectifier's fault, or some type of grounding issue to the regulator rectifier, or some other type of power wire issue. Now, if you want more help with regulator rectifier stuff, I have a video on it. In the description, I'll put a link to it. We kind of dive in more to what's going on with the regular rectifier if you want to diagnose something like that. All right, it's pretty basic. Don't overthink it. Test it out. Hopefully you get some good results. Hopefully this helps you guys out. And if you do need more help with your bike, diagnosing certain things going on, I do have a private Facebook group for members to come in and we can all talk about motorcycles and try to get some stuff fixed get you guys back on the road. If you wanna know more about that, also a link in the description. I hope you did find this video helpful. If so, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Oh, and guess what? New patches, iron-on patches, Motorcycle MD, they're crisp, I love them. You can buy one yourself if you'd like. Support Motorcycle MD channel. Until next time, Cody from Motorcycle MD, bringing you guys some quality tips and tricks for your next build or your daily rider. See you guys next time, hopefully I'm feeling a lot better. Peace.